Hello and welcome to the panel. I'm your host, Lovedell, and today's episode is titled Things I Wish I Knew Before I Got Into a Relationship. I'm joined on the panel today by Lex, Shamika, and Quinton. Welcome to the panel, guys. Thank you. So tell me a bit about yourselves. Uh, so I'm Lex. Um, in terms of relationships, I was in a seven year. Um, we were engaged for three of those years. Um, long story short, we moved out and three weeks later, she didn't want any of it. So, yeah, quite a big story on that. Wow. Hi, I'm Shamika. I um, have a son. Um, had a six year relationship, which ended nearly three years ago now. Um, a lot happened in that relationship, so we'll probably get into that at some point. <laughs> Yeah, my name is Quinton. I've been in, I would say, two, two years, sort of two years relationship. Uh, there's a lot more sort of drama and stories that I'll <laughs> definitely get onto eventually. But yeah. So, what would you say is the main thing you wish you knew before you got into your last relationship? I think for me, I think what I wish I knew was the purpose of going into a relationship. Um, the main reason is, you know, if you haven't got the right purpose going into a relationship with the right substance, it's not going to last. So that's one of the tips I definitely sort of think I wish I knew I've got, got that substance before I went into a relationship. Um, because obviously I think that's the stuff that makes it work, especially looking at my parents and what they had in their relationship. Um, that's why I believe that's why it lasts so much longer, especially the previous generation. For me, I think communication would be a big thing um how people communicate with each other i think a lot of people find it difficult um just basic talking mm -hmm. um some people just aren't able to do that and they'll avoid it which just um a lot of the time people will be on different pages and you won't realize it because you haven't even had a conversation and um little things will turn into such bigger things when you know they don't need to be yeah i think i wish i knew whether it was going to last mm -hmm. to be honest the, sort of the unknown yeah um, which i don't think you can ever really have any control over um because there's a part of me that looks at it as you know six years of that relationship was very well spent mm -hmm. um and i don't regret a minute of it um and it was a bit of a shame for me actually that it didn't carry on going uh, but in general, just the fact that it ended and obviously you feel you put so much time and effort into that relationship for it to then at some point make you think it was all for nothing. Mm -hmm. So I think also the age that it was, I feel I've missed quite a big part of exploring mm -hmm. what options are out there. Um, so for me, I think it's just the unknown, really, which mm -hmm. is something you've got no control over. Yeah. So what do you really think the purpose of relationships are or is? That's a hard question. It, yeah, it's a hard question. <laughs> <laughs> it's a hard question. Um, What's I the point think, in relationships? Well, you're supposed to find your, your soulmate. You're supposed to find your other half, someone that you can really build and grow with and, and have a family with and obviously teach your, your children to be, to have um, all the ingredients that they need to then go on with their lives and then obviously they have their families. Um, and obviously you, you can only sort of find that purpose. It's just very difficult. Um, by getting to know somebody, but you need to be going into a relationship for the right reasons, um, rather than not going in for the right reasons, or at least understand what where is this going, mm -hmm. where's you know where we're we driving to. I think unfortunately, a lot of people get into not necessarily relationships, situationships, for stunting reasons. <laughs> <laughs> they do. I feel like people end up in situations not necessarily because they want to be in a situation mm -hmm. but because they want to have someone mm -hmm. that looks a certain way or has someone that's doing se certain things um just to be able to be like look who i'm with or look who i'm dealing with rather than them actually wanting to be in that yeah. situation yeah <laughs> I think it's weird. I think the word purpose for a relationship is quite interesting as well, because mm -hmm. I don't know whether there, it should be defined as that. Mm -hmm. I feel like because relationships doesn't have to just be partners. It can be friendships yeah. as well. But if we're talking about, you know, romantic, um, re romantic mm -hmm. stuff, yeah. Yeah. yeah, then I think it depends on what you're looking for, really, mm -hmm. because I mean, I agree with what you say quite a lot yeah. about the whole, you know, having a child or whatever you want in terms of family. But mm -hmm. there are obviously some relationships out there where they don't want children. Of yeah. course. So it, it's yeah. kind of weighing up what it is you actually want yeah. out of that relationship. That's right. 
finding someone that's on the same wavelength as, as you. And sometimes that's not always something you can find out after a year or so because people go through change. Yeah. You know, you explore different journeys together. And then eventually you could find out after three years you actually want different things mm -hmm. because of some experiences that you had. So yeah. I don't know whether purpose is the right word. I think it's yeah. just if you know you're looking for someone to share the same experiences with you, yeah. then make sure you're doing it for the right reasons, really. Yeah, I guess I agree with you in the sense that everyone has their kind of individual purpose for a relationship. So yeah. for some people, it is the end outcome is, OK, I want to have a family. I want to get married. I want to have children. For some people, it's just like... I just want to see where, where it goes. I just want to kind of explore and um, just see if I, while I'm still finding out who I am, I'm not quite ready to be married. I'm not quite ready to have children, but I'm still trying to figure it out. In the meantime, I just want to have fun. So everyone has, I guess, different purposes for it. So, yeah. yeah. Um, what would you say is the biggest challenge in modern dating? <laughs> <laughs> or what are some of the challenges? Let me not say the biggest challenge. What are some of the challenges? So I had a period where I was a bit of a serial dater. Yeah. Um, and I loved it, absolutely loved it, meeting loads of different women, seeing, all, hearing all their stories and seeing what they're all about. But the problem was, you find yourself judging very quickly. Mm. Like you, you find yourself sort of walking up to them. <clears throat> and there were times where I went on a date with someone and they were walking towards me and I just went, nope. <laughs> um, it happens. Yeah. But there are other times, obviously, when you sort of go, okay, yeah. yes, and now let's, let's start talking. And it's very easy to, if you, if you go into it believing in your head you want a relationship, yeah it's hard to then shake your mind off of something that you've noticed that you think will bug you mm -hmm. because you automatically, from my experience, at times I thought I'm put off already and I think that would bug me if that happened every day. Little things like um, a date I went on where a girl had this, this voice which was very squeaky. <laughs> um, I'm not, I, I, you know, and I, I was sitting in this pub with her and I could, I could feel people looking because, because they, the were, they, yeah, they, were, they were sensing that I was in discomfort. <laughs> and if you took the voice away, she was a lovely girl. Yeah. <clears throat> but knowing that you know, I couldn't wake up in the morning and have that voice saying morning. <laughs> so you know, it's, it's this whole judgy, I don't know, I think it's so quick for people to make a judgment. Yeah. And I think that's quite a challenge to be able to sort of say, give them more than just half an hour or, or yeah. a date. Yeah. Um, that's, that's a challenge for me, in my opinion. Did you give her another date after that? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> I couldn't. I really okay. couldn't. I could, that's something, though, that I couldn't shrug off. Yeah. Um, so, no. Okay. Um, that, was, that was too strong for me. <laughs> well, what about you, Quinta? You know what? Actually, I, I, I agree with what you're saying. Um, I think it's the, definitely in this modern days, it's the accessibility, it's the ease. It's, it's much easier to basically meet other people, um, in my opinion. Like, for example, I, if I go on a date with somebody, I pretty much know straight away if there's something that I like or if I dislike something, mm -hmm. and there's this weird voice in my head that says, no, let's move on to something else, <laughs> or, you know, I'm not, I don't like the hair, or I don't like this, I don't, and it's just, it's very quick. Um, and then obviously you just sort of shut down, you just see that, you see out the date, and then you just leave it as that. And then you move on to the next one. At least you um, see out the date. Yeah, that, I, know some, <laughs> I know some people that then, see and 10 minutes later go, listen, I'd rather just, yeah. you know. <laughs> so credit for that. Um, and then obviously, again, social media is another one as well. It's, you know, you can meet people online. You can slide in the DMs, as people say. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I'm trying to say? And it's just like you, the accessibility. You can have multiple people talking at the same time. Um, and then obviously the speed of that as well. As quickly as you meet somebody, you could be finishing with that somebody and then seeing somebody else. So it just causes so much confusion, so much traffic. <laughs> Shamika said some kind of... <laughs> when he was talking, yeah. this is really interesting for me, <laughs> being the only female here, yeah. because that's how guys think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So when you're, you know, going on, like, on a date, mm -hmm. even okay. just from when you're walking in, you're already thinking and judging. Mm -hmm. I think that's crazy. It's crazy. <laughs> it's, do you know what? I, I'm not going to speak for all guys. Um, I'm going to definitely talk for myself. I very much like to, I don't like to be judgmental, but overly judgmental, but I like to be attracted to the person. Mm -hmm. um, and that's something you know instantly. I know that instantly, yeah. I think, in my, yeah, I think I know instantly whether okay. I'm attracted to somebody and that's from head to toe. I don't. Okay. Okay. I don't know if I'm attracted to someone just on first basis. Okay. I don't. I definitely don't. I think this is the difference between male and females. I yeah. do think it is. I think mm. males are very visual creatures. Yeah. Yes. So they're kind of <laughs> what they see, what they hear, yeah. that sort of thing. Whereas females are more likely to give someone a chance, even if they're not um, physically attracted to them. Okay. They will actually sit and say, yeah. all right, let me see where this goes. Okay. Well, I did like this about him, so I'll give okay. him a second date. Whereas guys are like, ah, squeaky voice, no. <laughs> I mean, I wish I was more like that. Yeah, I'm not gonna yeah, lie, yeah, because yeah. for me, I feel, I actually feel that when, if you had a really attractive girl at a bar 
and yeah. someone who you were not attracted to. Mm. A lot of people say this whole theory about personality is more important than looks. And I, I kind of agree with it, but in the dating world, I don't, mm -hmm. I disagree. I, I actually think that you are gonna want to approach that girl who you are attracted to first to get to know them. Mm -hmm. If they then end up not feeling you don't feel the vibe from yeah, them yeah. i still don't think i'm going to go up to the girl who i don't find attractive no, no, i wouldn't do it because i'm not that initial attraction isn't yeah. there and you need that pool yeah you literally need that pool. so I, when you and i think also what happens is with these you know a dating apps yeah. you're looking at these pictures yeah, and believe yeah. me if you don't look like that in person <laughs> it, like it can put you off it can you know because we know that yeah. Some people know how to have angles, you know, we, we've, we've all, I don't know, I've had that experience and I've sort of been like, okay, that's a bit different. Um, and I understand that that again is quite a judgmental yeah. attitude, but yeah. it's also the reality. You know, you go and meet someone with those expectations that they've given you, yeah. you know, and if you kind of see that and then you don't see it in person, you almost feel like you've been a bit fooled. Yeah, yeah you do, um, you do. So I don't know. I have a question. Have either of you ever had a situation where the girl's been walking towards you and you've just thought, no, this isn't, this isn't going to go well. And then <laughs> into the day, your, your mind's changing. Quinton? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Really? I've never had that. I know. It. Oh. And do you know what it is as well? It's, I believe in me personally again, I need to be first of all attracted to the, to the lady, to the woman. Mm -hmm. And then I'd like to find out about the personality after. Because then, yeah. for me as well, I like to have that pull factor to keep pulling me in. Um, as I said, I like to wake up in the morning and be like, yeah, this is my woman. This is what I'm attracted to. If I, if I lose that attractiveness to the woman, I start to fade. Um, that's, that's just what I've learned over the years about myself. But this is where the, the other challenge in dating on, with all the apps comes in. Because you know that you've probably got another <clears throat> 15 matches and you know that if you're not attracted to that one, that there's, there's so much choice out there, this which is, does make it difficult. Yes. And you know yeah. that if you're not attracted, you can think to yourself, it's not, even, <clears throat> not the end of the world, there's someone else there's someone who else. I can possibly go on a date with who I would be attracted to, yeah. then let me get to know them yeah. because I'm already halfway there. Okay, I've never been on any dating apps or anything, so I don't know about that. But one thing I hate is I don't like being approached when I'm out because I don't like to be judged Obviously, if guys are <clears throat> chatting me up or whatever, um, they're judging me based on how I look, and that's not how I want to get to know someone. So I'm very that you can't you can't talk to me. You can't. There's no way to talk to me. Coming up to me, there just isn't. Unless you know someone that I'm with, that's the only way. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. So. So how does a guy get because into your life? Because you guys have now? just confirmed it for me as well. <laughs> confirmed that our opinion. You yeah. are like my, okay. Well, most guys, a hundred percent of guys, <laughs> okay. Um, okay, <laughs> judge you on how you look, on how you look. So for me, that's not how I want to meet someone. So, so. how would a guy? How can a guy get your attention? Um, without he can't. It's he impossible. Can't. It's actually impossible. You have to know someone that I know. So they have to befriend your friends. No, no, so no, no, no. You have to already sort of message there, them and there has to already be a connection. Like you have to know someone I know. I don't like people. Don't talk to me. So have you never ever. <laughs> okay, that's that's fair. Because I know you're judging me based on how I look, have and you, I really don't like that. Have you ever looked at a guy and thought he looks really nice? So I'd like to have a conversation to see what he's yeah, about. Yeah, but no. Okay. No, I can see a guy and be like, he looks nice. I won't fancy him. Okay. Not even, not even curious to, to have a conversation. Absolutely not. No. Interesting. No. Nope. Wow. No. <laughs> <laughs> very very different mm, so for, yeah. for the guys yeah. because you've said obviously attraction is very important to you that kind of physical look what happens if that physicality changes during the course of your relationship your eyes just opened kind of wide what is going Why? on over here Quinton <laughs> what's happening what are you thinking <laughs> you're thinking like no nah, I'm out obviously of course um once you well, again, I'm trying to speak personally for myself. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you know, if I'm with somebody and obviously their body changes, obviously when you go through pregnancy, for example, your body's going to change. Um, of course, like when the love grows there, it's, the love is going to grow. You know, you're not going to be chopping and changing <coughs> like an iPhone or Samsung like that, just going through different people. Um, but yeah, you, you learn to grow and you learn to age gracefully as well. And you learn to sort of develop and instead of looking for the physical, because that's what a lot of guys probably look for, you actually look at the friendship. You know, as you get older and as you grow older as well and actually enjoy each other's company more so then it's not so much on the eye of the beholder it becomes more of this is my life partner 
we share so much in common. We we love doing. We love being around each other. Okay. I mean, I like it. <laughs> um, yeah. No, yeah. This is this kind yeah. of what supports um, my sort of opinion on the idea that I feel the physical attraction is what's most important first. Okay. Because once I'm attracted physically to that person, then I want to get to know them. Mm -hmm. And I think if you're with someone that long, yeah. and they start changing, because yeah. you are there's there's more there now. It's not That's just right. the physical. You've got the emotional attachment there. That's mm -hmm. right. Which means you now love that person. If you're in love, you love that person for definitely more than just what they look like, yeah. who they are. So I think with that in mind, I think that it just changes the whole dynamics. But when you first meet someone, you don't have that emotional yeah. connection. Mm -hmm. So it's hard to sort of say, you know, and I think, sorry, I think that's why it's easy to then be put off from initial, yes. because you're like, do you know what, I've got no attachment to this person. It's actually yeah. easy to say, I'll find someone else. That's right. Um, whereas when, that's what I mean, when you're with someone who you're really attracted to on both levels, that's right. it's harder to detach from that because there's more to it now than just your looks. Yeah. Okay. Um, has there ever been a time, this is again to the guys, has there ever been a time where as you've gotten to know, someone that you maybe weren't attracted to initially, but as you've gotten to know that it could be in a platonic kind of situation that they start to become attractive to you. <laughs> yeah, I think so. I think there's been a couple of people where I've always been friends with them mm -hmm. for a long, long time. And then suddenly I sort of think, actually like we, we get on really, really well. Mm -hmm. And I think that the attraction is sometimes there, but because when I first met that person, mm -hmm. Yeah, I didn't actually think to myself you could be a potential partner. Yeah. But I think that's also because some friends you meet while you're with in a relationship. Yeah. And when that relationship maybe ends and you have you spend more and more time with that person, you suddenly think, is there something else here? Because you already know them. Mm -hmm. And then, like you said, some people change. Yeah. So if you're in a relationship like I was for seven years, within six years, that person could change even physically. Mm -hmm. And then suddenly it's like, hmm, different light has been sort of shed here. Mm -hmm. So for me, that, that can happen. <laughs> I, was, I had to have a think when he was talking actually of of that experience to me, <clears throat> if I experienced that. I think I've gone on dates with people that I've been friends with from a long time, even from like primary school or something. And I, I don't know, I just always felt that there, there could be something here because obviously you do, like you said, you get to know the person, you know the person already for years. Mm -hmm. um, then you start to think, okay, there might be something here, but it's never materialized into a relationship. I've never known somebody for a long time and then all of a sudden ended up going out with somebody. I've gone on dates with people that I've been friends with. It's almost just this, like, I hate to use this term, but almost to test the waters to say, is there definitely something here? Let's go out to go get something to eat. Let's go for a drink because obviously you've known each other for a long time, but it's never, for me personally, fested into anything more. Yeah. I think it can happen though. It can yeah. happen, yeah, I, I agree with that. It can happen. <clears throat> what about you, for you, Shamika, is what's your, I guess, most important thing, if there is a specific thing on Honestly, your first meeting? Honestly, definitely. Okay. I think with dating, a lot of people are not honest. A lot of people are not honest about their intentions. Um, a lot of people are not honest if they're multi like multiple dating. Um, definitely honesty. Mm -hmm. So how do you know that when you meet them? Like how, what, if they're what, being honest. Yeah, what would give you, you the vibe? Do you? I'm saying, so what makes you maybe think, like what gives you that feeling that they are? Is there anything they say or do that makes you sort of think, okay, I actually kind of believe this one. So I want to mm -hmm. go and see them again. Do you know what I mean? Is there anything that you I get, look yeah, out for? Yeah, nothing I can pinpoint. No, nothing I can pinpoint. So is it almost like a leap of faith? I try to, like a... um, I'm more of an actions person anyway, so I would just kind of um, continue dating them and see how their actions are towards me. That would tell me a lot, rather than go by what they say. I don't really um, take on board what people say too much because their actions will tell me what I need to know. So what would you guys say is the purpose of dating? So the actual to know activity the of dating? I think it depends what you're also looking for. Mm -hmm. There are some people out there that are dating because they just want to have fun. Mm -hmm. um, and I think like what you said, a lot of people are not honest about that. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Um, which makes it very difficult for ladies, especially even the other way. It makes it difficult for men at times because mm -hmm. some women won't openly admit that. Um, whereas if you're actually trying to find someone, then I think the purpose is to go on dates with people and see who you're meeting, mm -hmm. find out what they're all about and whether they kind of give you this feeling. Um, I think since my ex, there was probably one or two people that I went on dates on where, where from the initial off, I was like, oh, I want to know everything about you. Mm -hmm. um, and when you then go on dates after and you don't get that feeling, it is something to compare it to for me. Yeah. Um, so I think... I think you, I'm not saying you know when you found the one, because I believe there's more than one out there that you can have, but I think you, you kind of get a feeling when there's someone that you've got 
something to work with, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, I agree <laughs> with that. I do agree with that. Um, again, I do think that the purpose of dating is to get to know somebody and <coughs> it shouldn't, obviously dating as well, plural, so it's not just one time meeting somebody. You actually want to go on and actually say, okay, this was okay. Let's go out somewhere different. Let's go to different environments to see how you act in different environments as well because that will also tell you a lot about somebody because sometimes it's not about what people say, it's about what people do. As I say, body language accounts for probably 70, 80% um, much more than what they say. Um, but then you're right again, people do, you know, they're, they're, they're not honest. Uh, people do lie. They, they say one or two or three things. <laughs> That's not true. And they really just want to, you know, get what they want out of it mm. and obviously then mistreat the other person. So it's, it's difficult. It's very, very difficult to date I don't think it's that hard. <laughs> I find it quite easy, yeah. actually, as long as you're honest. If you're honest, it's very easy. When you say honest, do you mean honest about um, what you want and your intentions? That's um, or... Not so much, because I think that can be tricky. Um, because you might have, um, you might not have any intentions. You might just want to have fun. Mm -hmm. And then as you're getting to know the person more, your intentions change. Mm -hmm. you might change and think, oh, actually, I'd like something to develop with this person. Mm -hmm. um, so you, you said that guys can't really approach you. <clears throat> so no. how do you go on dates? What, what <laughs> methods do you use if you're not on the apps? Like, I don't use so, any methods. Uh, I just, um, I don't, I don't know. I just. Um, it was just interesting because you said it's easy. And I'm thinking if you yeah, no, if guys can't approach you and you're yeah. using apps, I want to know your methods <laughs> yeah. of, of what's easy. There's just, I don't know how, but I just, there's just always a lot of people around me. <laughs> so you've got a big, basically, friendship circle. I guess so, yeah. yeah. So there's just all, there's always someone or a couple that are there. <laughs> Easy as that. <laughs> yeah, easy as that. Yeah. I think it's easier for girls, though. I do think it's easier for girls. Do you think? Yeah, I think so. I think so because Ex um, I think guys are always <laughs> guys are so like they put themselves out there more than what females do. Mm -hmm. I think in terms of if they're interested in someone, they'll let them know. Mm -hmm. Whereas I probably wouldn't if I was interested in someone. I probably wouldn't do anything about it, I might just think, oh, he's cute or whatever, but I, won't talk to him. I wouldn't really act on it, <laughs> whereas guys act on it. So mm. they'll message you and ask you out and stuff. So t if we were to kind of flip that, doesn't it make it hard for females if, again, modern dating might be mm. slightly different, but if you're talking about traditional <clears throat> dating where a female wouldn't really approach a guy, that if there is a guy they're like, they're kind of just waiting and hoping that that person's gonna notice them and come over to them. Oh. Do you see what I mean? Doesn't that make it difficult? in that sense, and if the only guys that approach you are guys that you're not really feeling. Do you see what I mean? Whereas in a guy would just go after what he wants. Does, is that, could that not be seen as easier, maybe? Um, or no? Not to no? Me. <laughs> I know it's challenging, I guess, for a guy to put himself out there. <coughs> is but it? But I think, I don't think it is. In a sense, I mean, is in it? a sense, but because of the rejection, But things we, what you yes, remember as well, thing. It's, it's not all guys that are very out there mm -hmm. and very much going fishing. It's a lot of guys are quite reserved. A lot of guys are actually very sort of, um, they're quite more concealed in their actions as well. They probably look at a girl and think, oh yeah, she's nice. Like, I but go. then you just go about it in a different way, wouldn't you? They probably, yeah. I don't, I can't speak for them because I don't know how <laughs> they go about it, but I'm just saying they probably have their own methods about how they go about it, mm -hmm. but not all guys are go-getters. Some guys are not like that. Mm. Some guys are quite reserved and keep themselves to themselves mm. and you know, she looks nice, but I don't have the confidence maybe to go up to her and talk to her. So it's, yeah, there's definitely a percentage of guys that are like that as well. Mm. I think it depends what method you use to, to try and date right. as well. Because mm -hmm. the, the, you know, the traditional side is very different to now yeah. what we're with yeah. in terms of the apps and everything. Mm -hmm. And I think, I think with apps, girls have a lot of control. That's true. Because they yeah. get God knows how many likes in a day. And it's basically, guys just, I'm not going to go into that, it's too much. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's no, go ahead. Too much, too go much. Ahead. No? No, I, I just go think ahead. that like, <laughs> I've seen guys sit there talking in a conversation doing this and, think, and they're not even looking at who they're swiping and the reason why is they say it saves time because they've swiped a thousand girls and then the next day they'll wake up with like 20 matches and get rid of who they don't like oh. so that, that's stories that I've heard and I've yeah. also I've seen that there are certain apps where you swipe and it's it's basically just waiting for the girl to, but they, they, I feel they've got the control because guys are, and I, I think I think, I think social media I think social media is just blowing everything out of proportion I'll yeah. be honest with you I think just, because obviously I'm assuming from the women's perspective they can literally hold the power and be you know 
I'm only going to reply and I'm going to do a background check. This person has to be making six figures and six foot six and shoulders out here. And all that. <laughs> do you know what I'm trying to say? And then it's like, you haven't even, you haven't even thought about the person that's probably got in contact. And then what that does is all the other women in society look at that and then they think, oh, okay, she's doing this and this is how she's going. I need to step my game up. I need to level up and all that kind of stuff. And then all of a sudden it's impossible to approach anybody. Do you see what I'm trying to say? Because the playing field is, is completely disrupted. So social media for me personally, as you can tell, it's just completely like, it's just completely taken away the natural element out of dating yeah, yeah. altogether. Yeah. Well, I feel that it's done that because I feel like people have a very disposable and replaceable attitude. Yes. I feel like people are just like, oh, okay, you won't talk to me. I can go find someone else. Mm -hmm. I can go message someone else. Mm -hmm. yeah. And um, I feel like people give up very easily as well, um, more than they would if social media wasn't involved. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, in relationships, if there's a problem, they'll be like, oh, I'm not dealing with this. I'll just go get someone else. Mm -hmm. Like, they give up really easily. I agree with that, yes. I guess um, social media presents more options yeah. than you would have if you didn't have that kind of definitely. social media or dating yeah, apps or that definitely. sort of thing. Um, if it was real life, how many girls or how many guys do you meet on a daily basis exactly. or do you have access to on a daily basis? So I guess that is where maybe the disposable... Yeah. I think it's more than even just in relationships. I think it's a an issue we kind of have in society as a whole as at the general, moment yeah, relating whole, to yeah general yeah, yeah. kind of issue that kind of thing of just not wanting to we're not wanting to see anything through not wanting to work hard uh, wanting everything to kind of happen quickly my way or the highway type thing <laughs> <laughs> which is a bit problematic um what do you guys think about multi-dating do you think it's important to multi-date or do you think you should kind of date someone and Love see it through <laughs> what do you okay. think uh i've multi-dated before um I think it sounds really bad, but when, when during the serial time, um, I would look at my diary <laughs> and I would have three dates booked in for that week, literally. And the reason for it, in my opinion, is because there's no attachment. Um, we talk minimal via mm -hmm. texting until that date. Mm -hmm. um, and I make it clear to them that I'm dating, mm -hmm. as in like, you know, not just going on a date with you, but I, I'm having a date with someone else, by the way, this week. Mm -hmm. And if they want to take it or leave it, that's up to them. Mm -hmm. But at least I've kind of put it out there and said. Yeah. But I think also that's actually been that's caused problems for me in the past because sometimes I have met two where I'm like, ooh, like both quite, you know, and I don't like the idea of then continuing that with two. Okay. Um, I think that's a bit disrespectful. So it's it's finding the balance. Um, so yeah, I kind of stopped the multi um, and tried to focus on one. Mm -hmm. But then what's gutting is when that doesn't work out and you think, I've got to start again now um, <laughs> and start swiping or whatever. So I, I don't know, I just think, <laughs> I, I don't know, I just think that it's, um, I think it's okay, but mm -hmm. I think like what you were saying earlier, as long as if you're honest, yeah. then you're, you're doing your part by saying, I am multi-dating, you are aware, mm -hmm. and now it's up to you whether you want to carry on or not. All right. Um, yeah, I've definitely multi-dated. I'm not going to say I haven't. And I think it's because, again, in the modern society, it's much easier to multi-date now as well. Um, I definitely agree with you. If you're, putting, if you're putting it out there and letting them know that you actually are multi-dating, then you're not being uh, disrespectful. You're mm -hmm. letting them know early. It's not being deceitful. Um, but it's, it's one of those kind of things where it's, it's hard because it's, it's almost like, it's, again, what I've experienced, you, I've liked something about somebody mm -hmm. and then I've gone on another date and I'd like something else about somebody. Yeah. And then what you end up doing is thinking, right, do I like this? Do I put up with this? Or should I just go on to her and then maybe see how that one goes? And then it's almost like you you end up going on multi-dates because you like different aspects and you're trying to, it almost puts it all in whole and <laughs> into one for you. So you can go down a, a slippery slope doing that as well. Um, and obviously you can get in trouble and X, Y, and Z. I've definitely been in trouble by myself. Um, so, yeah. Get in trouble how though, if you're being honest about it? It's just the fact that it's, it's one of those kind of things where I just think they just generally, I just think women don't generally like it. Even if you tell them that you're actually multi-dating, I just don't think they like it. I don't think anyone likes it. Exactly. So <laughs> even if Not you say something like... Yeah. I've known a few females that, are, that have said back, yeah, me too. Okay. Mm. And it's interesting how when I hear that, I'm like, oh, are you? <laughs> yeah. Really? <laughs> <laughs> Make that change. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, I've, I've had some okay. females that have said the same thing. You know, like I'm multi-dating and I think it's again, you're both open and honest about yeah. it. So yeah. it shouldn't be a problem because yeah. if you were, if something stood out that much, you would yeah. say, I want to see you again. Yeah. And I think then that's kind of a message that's being sent there to sort of say, right, there's obviously something mutual between us if yeah. we both want to see each other again. I um, guess where it becomes problematic is, like you said, people, you can change. You can say, go into it like, okay, yeah, I want a multi-date. Yeah. 
and the other person's like, yeah, I'm multi-dating too, cool, we're multi-dating. Then that other person catches feelings. Exactly, that's the worst. And <laughs> you still want to keep multi, do you see what yeah, I mean? And yeah. one person still wants to multi-date while somebody else is kind of, didn't expect to is now start to catch feelings. That's when I think it starts to become a bit problematic and feelings get hurt. But that's natural. If you, if you spend time with somebody, yeah. anybody, yeah. You spend time with anybody, whether it's a, a physical or relationship or even a friendship, you're going to catch some kind of feelings mm -hmm. towards yeah. that person. Yeah. So it's always going to be a danger route anyway, multi-dating, mm -hmm. technically. Um, it's, it's got its understanding, the fact that you want to see, okay, you want to basically test the waters to find out which one you actually like and want to go with. But then again, you're going to develop feelings if you actually genuinely like things about that person. So mm -hmm. it's, it's quite a dangerous game to play. Yeah, it is. I've had issues with guys because they've had issues with me not wanting to be exclusive with them. Mm -hmm. So um, kind of coming up to like three years that I've been single and in that time there's been three people who have wanted, like we've been dating for um, some months and then they've wanted, it's got to a stage where they're like, well, we're basically together, let's just be together. And I'm like, well, no. <laughs> um, my reasons for that, and I feel like I can't say that because I know that will make them feel some type of way because at that stage there are feelings involved. But for me, there's still that uncertainty. There must be of, because otherwise I just want to be, I just want to be with them. So mm -hmm. there must still be something that's making me feel like, oh, there's, there's someone else maybe out there. But um, it's difficult once feelings get involved to keep that honesty. It really mm -hmm. is. In the beginning, it's fine when there's, you know, you're just getting to know each other. But once you've established that, oh, this person really likes me and I quite like them, mm -hmm. um, and they're expressing, I don't want you going out with anyone else. Mm -hmm. You still want to go out, you know, you still want to go out with other people. It gets harder to be like, by the way, last night I went cinema. It gets harder to do that. Mm -hmm. And then that's when it gets tricky. I agree with that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> you mentioned something earlier, Lex, about um, the concept of the one the idea of there being a yeah, yeah. one yeah um what are you what are your thoughts on that i i think that there are loads of people out there that you could happily be with mm -hmm. i don't think there is necessarily the one mm -hmm. um i think it's nice when you hear stories where that's happened so my grandpa is a classic example he's married with his um well married for 65 years oh, wow. um she passed away a, a while ago but you know mm -hmm. they were the first girlfriend yeah. and boyfriend of each other and that was quite sweet um, and I think that's getting increasingly harder nowadays to have because of the amount of choice that's out there mm -hmm. and the amount of, and how easily accessible it is. Yeah. So I, I just think that there's a lot of people out there that would make you happy. Um, yeah, so for me, I don't think there's a such thing as the one. Mm -hmm. I used to believe in that. <laughs> but, I'm believing now. Yeah, as, I've got, as I'm getting older, I think that there are maybe people, like there's maybe the one for you for certain periods of your life. So, um, like someone could be the one for you for, you know, in your 20s and then as you're getting older, um, you both change. Work mm. changes you, um, your social cir circle might change and, um, yeah, I'm not sure I believe in that anymore. I think there can be different, the ones at different stages in your life and not just romantically, I think even with friends I've noticed that as well. Um, some friendships have been really great for me at certain times in my life and then you just feel like you kind of almost grow out of that and no longer have things in common and not much to say to each other and it just kind of naturally kind of drifts apart. Yeah, I agree, um, completely agree uh, with both because at the end of the day, uh, first of all, you want to go statistically, you will never meet everybody on the planet to actually find out who the one is. Um, it's just impossible. And then obviously, depending on your environments, um, very rightly said, it's, you do change as you get older. Um, new friendships, new circles, new circumstances, new work. Um, play, if you, even if you go to different places, you actually get to meet different people. And what you thought was the one might not be the one. And then obviously once that sort of plays an inception in your mind, it starts to grow. And then you start thinking, well, maybe this isn't the right decision. Um, and obviously it, it does happen. And like you said, your, your grandparents, I mean, it, it does happen as well. You do have that um, 
you might meet boyfriend and girlfriend for the first time and live happily ever after, but it's definitely becoming much more obsolete now because yeah. the choice is, is so vast now um, and people change so much. There's so much influences that actually change decisions so quickly. Um, what you thought was, was to be maybe is not to be. Um, so it just makes it very difficult. So what do you think maybe was the secret to previous generations in having that kind of longevity in relationships? Um, I definitely think it was much more, I mean, first of all, it was natural. There was no, obviously, social media. Um, the world wasn't so open, because uh, obviously that's what social media does. It opens the world to everybody in your fingertips. Yeah. Um, so what it actually does now is is what they had was actually you get to meet somebody. Um, people's lives are very simple. You know, you get up, you go to work, you come home, uh, your wife is there and your family and you might have a few cousins and a few friends in a, in a small area and that's that's about it mm -hmm. um some people never even leave the country um people, some people even have the means to leave the country or, or wherever you are in the world um so it's it's much more smaller area or smaller people to pick the one from if you want to put it in that category um, and then you generally learn to i think there's much more tougher resilience as well because there's just you just don't give up that's what i found from that generation mm -hmm. Um, so I definitely see it in my grandparents and in my parents as well. There was just that, right, we're married now. We just have to work things out, even if things are quite difficult, et cetera, et cetera. Whereas now it's like, well, we don't have to put up with that. <laughs> you can just move on to the next person. Yeah. I think mindset, mindset is a big, big part of that. I think people just have a different mindset now. They don't want to stick things out as they did before. Mm -hmm. they, would try, they would try more. They would want to work at things. Whereas people just give up. Mm -hmm. now and just move on like yeah. you said yeah i think it's a lot harder to earn respect in this day of age as well um mm. so i think you don't really hear the word gentleman being said much <laughs> it's more just like oh this guy um or you know well yeah things like that <laughs> so i just think yeah i think i think that type of the romantic gestures that would have happened back in the day compared to now mm -hmm. I mean, you know, the things you can do now, all the things online and just there's so much now that I think everything's been seen, everything's been done. And because there's because it's just never ending, there's too many opportunities, again, too many choices yeah. as well. You know, like you said, you don't feel like you need to work through things. If you've been with someone for four months, you just think there'll be someone else. Yeah. Um, and I think that that's something that's just, again, too accessible. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I just think it's, it's a massive difference how it yeah. used to be. Yeah. Uh, what do you guys think about the concept of settling? Um, you know, people are always saying, like, don't settle. How do you know that there's something more out there? Is is it possible? I don't know. Like that kind of idea. Of, OK, in some situation, you might say, OK, you're settling. If there's a guy that treats you really bad or a girl that treats you really bad. OK, that's settling. Yeah. Okay. But what about this concept that people kind of a lot of people have this I, uh, kind of feel like, when they're in a relationship, what if there's something better out there? Am I settling? What if there's something even better? What if this is not the best that I can have? What do you think about that kind of concept? <clears throat> I think partly when I was saying about the dating, when you meet someone, you suddenly go, no. Yeah. I think it's, it's just the opposite feeling. I think when you get that feeling where you're like, oh, I'm really indulged and I really want to find out more about this person, you've gone beyond the settling stage already because I think you're, you're, you're into that person already from the offset. Mm. And if the conversation keeps flowing, you feel like, I don't, there's also this phrase about punching, isn't there? Yeah. You know, I, I feel like it would be nice to make, to feel like you're with someone where you're punching because then you're definitely not settling because it's almost like, oh, like she's too good for me, but she likes me. And it's, a, it's that feel good where you sort of yeah, think, oh, yeah. like, what is that? That's got to be more. Um, so I don't know really. I, I think the settling term is quite interesting because it also maybe relates to age. I think some people get to a point where they feel that they're just not having any hope or luck with this dating mm. um, side of life. And you get people that sort of say, if we haven't found anyone by 35, mm -hmm. you know, we get married or whatever. And, but that stuff happens. Yeah, like does, people do it, it because yeah, they think yeah. to themselves, we're really good friends. Yeah. We could have a baby yeah. and we can raise them together because we get on. Yeah. And you see a lot, I don't know, I've seen quite a few circumstances where that's happened. And I class that as settling mm -hmm. because you, you, you don't want to miss out on those things in life. But because you're struggling to find someone you can maybe trust and get to know long enough, you mm -hmm. sort of think, maybe I should just settle um, for a safe bet, maybe, mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. Um, you know. no, I, I definitely agree. I think settling is it's a very difficult topic to talk about as well. Um, speaking from my personal view as well, I was with somebody at uni. Um, I went to Birmingham and there was somebody I was with for two years. And um, he was there and I was just, 
you know, I was thinking to myself, there's something not quite right here. I couldn't quite say what it was, couldn't quite think what it was, but I just felt like everything just stopped. Um, obviously, there's a lot of things that I wanted to do. And I was thinking, well, I haven't even started my life yet. I haven't even done this, I haven't even done that. And I was thinking to myself, well, I know this sounds kind of bad, but I did wait. There was basically, she, she called it off. And I said, okay, if you're going to call it off now, then that's it. No return, <laughs> kind of thing. <laughs> and um, I kind of I left. And obviously, like, obviously, I've seen her now. She's married. She's got a kid. And obviously, I'm happy for her because I remember her saying as well that she always wanted to have a family. Mm -hmm. So she followed out her actions and actually I congratulated her as well. Mm -hmm. But it was one of those kind of things where, for me, at that time, in, in that moment, it was the feeling mm -hmm. of something's not quite right here. Mm -hmm. um, and it is difficult because, obviously, again, what you said about the punching, um, you do have a, I don't even want to say a selfish element in there, but you do have a sort of, um, if this person is fit to be or not fit to be, or is this person going to be my equal? Mm -hmm. um, and if you feel like that person is not going to be your equal, you naturally have this pull factor away mm -hmm. from the situation. Again, just from my experience or yeah. feelings, that's just that, that kind of feeling of, oh, maybe there's something more or there's someone else out there that will equal what I would like. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Your face is saying, all right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> can't wait to speak. <laughs> um, my only experience of settling is um, my first major relationship. Um, had a baby out of that. Um, I was young. He's four years older than me. And I was just feeling like, okay, we have a baby. I don't really feel like I've got a boyfriend though. Um, I had a place, he didn't really move in with me. It's felt like I'm eating dinner by myself every night. Not actually, we don't really talk, we don't have much conversation. And I remember saying to myself, if there's no effort for Valentine's Day or my birthday, which are quite close together, then I'm just gonna call it um and we had a conversation and it was mutual it's definitely mutual but yeah it was just a feeling of like i'm really young is this it was nothing to do with feeling like is there someone better mm -hmm. is there something more out there it was just more this isn't right and is this all i deserve really um but i'm happy that happened because if it had have gone on any longer, there was probably a possibility of something bad happening. Mm. So it was done at the right time, definitely. Yeah. So, yeah. So I guess for most people, it's a feeling really, yeah. like some kind of intuition, so. something yeah. in your gut feeling, whatever, something in you that kind of says, this doesn't quite sit with right with me, yeah. or this does sit really well yeah. with me, that this feels right sort of thing. Yeah. I guess it's kind of an inexplainable kind of connection maybe it's each to their own everyone has their the own different, different yeah. thresholds of yes no maybe mm. or there's more out there mm -hmm. maybe, perhaps see i don't think it always has to do with oh there's more out there or there's sometimes it's just about you as well true. yeah that's for true. me it was definitely about me and just being like this isn't i don't want to be in this situation yeah. it doesn't i'm not happy yeah yeah <laughs>